New Zealand is arguably among the most fascinating island ecosystems on Earth. This is because the dominant group of native animals are the birds. Ever since these islands were formed over 80 million years ago, birds have dominated all terrestrial ecosystems, from the lowland grasslands to the alpine mountains. Birds have evolved to fill a variety of niches, ranging from flightless nocturnal generalists such as the kakapo to rather gruesome airborne omnivores such as the kias. However, one niche that hasn't been filled for over half a millennium is the large herbivore niche, as the largest birds currently on New Zealand only reach around four and a half kilograms. It hasn't always been this way, as only around 500 years ago, New Zealand was home to some of the largest birds of all time. If you want to hear more about some of the amazing bird life that calls our planet home, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Dinornithiforms, more commonly known as mowers, were the dominant herbivores of New Zealand. The Dinornithiforms are incredibly diverse, consisting of 11 species, none of which lasted all the way up to the late Holocene epoch. In this video, I want to talk about some of the evolutionary relationships and prehistory of mowers before giving a brief description to each of the species. The Dinornithiforms of New Zealand were members of the clade or infraclass Paleognathy, which contains dozens of living representatives, including the closest relatives of the mowers, the Tinamous from Latin America, of which there are 47 living species. This clade also contains the Kiwi birds, also from New Zealand, and the largest birds alive today, the ostriches, cassowaries, emus, and rheas. This clade is in fact ancient, with the oldest fossils dating to 70 million years ago, with molecular evidence pointing to an even older origin of 120 million years ago. The mowers themselves likely couldn't have appeared on New Zealand before the Oligocene drowning event. In the early Oligocene Epoch, the subcontinental crusts of Zealandia, which New Zealand is a part of, were mostly drowned out by the Pacific Ocean, with terrestrial sediments from this time being few and far between. It's possible that the relatives of the mower could fly over to New Zealand from larger land masses such as Australia and Papua New Guinea. The oldest unambiguous remains of mowers are two unnamed species from the St. Bathans fauna of the South Island. The fauna found in these rocks date to between 19 and 16 million years ago. The mowers you're likely familiar with evolved in the Pleistocene, clearly between the existence of the St. Bathans fauna and the appearance of these species in the fossil record, there was an adaptive radiation in the lineage of quaternary mowers. Now I will discuss the different species of mower, all of which inhabited New Zealand all the way up to between 1450 and 1500 CE. They were among the most diverse lineages of bird from New Zealand until they were eventually hunted to extinction. There are nine currently recognised species of moa from across both islands. These ranged in size, diet and ecological niche. The bush moa, Animalopteryx sitiformis, was on the smaller side of the moa lineage. Remains of this species have been found across New Zealand with the most complete remains being a partially articulated skeleton with substantial mummified tissue and feathers. This species was much smaller than its relatives, weighing 25 to 30 kilograms, meaning they were comparable to a rhea. Mantel's moa, Pachyornis garanoides, was endemic to the North Island. Here, it found home in the lowland areas, particularly in the wetlands and dunelands. These habitats extended to the far north, coastal Taranki and Hawke's Bay. Mantel's moa was named in 1848 in honour of New Zealand naturalist and politician Walter Mantel, 
who was a collector of Moa remains, P. Garanoides could have been confused for the bush mower at least from a distance, with Mantell's mower also only reaching 30 to 50 kilograms. However, this species had a more compact, robust build and an elongated skull and beak. Emuus Crasus, or the Eastern Moa, was an inhabitant of the South Island of New Zealand, and similar to Mantell's Moa, it inhabited lowland habitats including forests, grasslands, dunelands, and shrublands. Physically, this species had beige, hair-like feathers, and much wider feet when compared to other Moa species. Once again, softer parts of this animal's body had been found in the form of mummified specimens, including tracheal rings and remnants of skin. The head of this animal was likely bald, with coarse, hair-like filaments at the top of the neck, and the feathers grew thicker the further down the neck you went. The heavy-footed moa was once widespread on New Zealand's South Island, being prevalent in the lowlands of the landmass. These birds were absent from higher elevations, which extended to the subalpine regions, where they were replaced by the crested moa. This species was never abundant in New Zealand, even before the arrival of Polynesians on New Zealand's South Island, given the lack of sub-fossil evidence of their remains. Given the shape of this species' head, it's possible that the heavy-footed mower fed on tougher foliage, unlike the other species. In 2007, the gizzard of a heavy-footed mower was found, and preserved inside were 21 plant taxa, including large amounts of twigs and wood, along with the mosses and seeds. Pachyornis australis, or the crested moa, was also endemic to New Zealand's South Island and was the ecological proxy of the heavy-footed moa in the more northern subalpine altitudes. These moas have been found in high concentrations within caves, particularly the Honeycomb Hills Cave. Here, many fossil remains have been found. The same can be said for the Bulma Cavern, where in 2012 radiocarbon dating dated the youngest fossils of the Crested Moa to between 1396 and 1442 CE. Another slightly more grim fact about the Crested Moa is its extinction. Given they have only been found in subalpine regions, combined with a lack of evidence to support human interactions, it's possible that these mowers weren't driven to extinction by the Polynesians directly, more likely going extinct as a result of invasive mammals being brought over by the Polynesians. The broad build or coastal moa was another more widespread species of moa being found on New Zealand's North and South Islands as well as the more southerly Stewart Island. In 2012, a morphological study of individuals of this species interpreted proposed sexual dimorphism as differences among individuals to instead be a result of differing subspecies instead of sexual dimorphism. These subspecies were labelled E. C. curtis, the coastal mower, and E. C. gravis, the stout-legged mower. Endemic to the South Island of New Zealand, the upland mower was exclusively found at higher altitudes when compared to other species, particularly favouring the alpine and subalpine regions, where it fed on vegetation including flowers and herbs. This species rivaled the bush mower for being the smallest mower species. With a weight of between 17 and 34 kilograms and a standing height of less than one metre, the upland mower is believed to have been able to run incredibly quickly, with one estimate placing its maximum running speed at 112 kilometres per hour.
which is 31 metres a second. Now we move to the Giants of New Zealand. And as a heads up, these are some of the largest birds to have ever existed, as well as being New Zealand's largest native land animals. There were two species in the genus Dinornis, or the giant mowers, the North and the South Island species. Both of these animals were massive, even when compared to the largest birds alive today. The tallest females of both species could reach 12 feet or more than three and a half metres in height. And they could weigh 250 kilograms, double the weight of an ostrich. Though both species were believed to have been more hunched over in posture, they still could have reached leaves up to a dozen feet into the air, being the closest birds ever got to true giraffes. Aside from their physical stature, both species are believed to have been slow growers, only reaching adult size after a year, with their hind limbs completely developing after five-ish years. Without a doubt, we know more about these species than any other of the mowers, as we have coprolites, eggshells, feathers, footprints, and more from these birds. It's clear to see from this great diversity that the mowers were a resilient group of animals. Unfortunately, there was one predator that could and would one day eradicate them off the face of the earth. Polynesian settlers arrived on New Zealand sometime in the late 13th or early 14th centuries, with the oldest archaeological site in New Zealand dated to around 1300 CE. These settlers saw these massive native megafauna as a sight to behold, but also one that was to be eaten. Within just two centuries, the moa was driven to extinction by Polynesian settlers, with eight species being hunted directly, and the crested moa having its eggs hunted and destroyed by introduced predators, aka rats. The last of the moa are believed to have lasted until the 16th century, with none of these birds making it to the arrival of Europeans on New Zealand. Luckily, though, this may not be the end of the moa. Through a process called de-extinction, geneticists aim to revive the moa through gene editing technology. Of course, such plans and ambitious ideas face plenty of complications, as all de-extinction does. And as it rightfully should, the DNA from the bush mower has been extracted with a nuclear genomic assembly. It would have been amazing to see even one of the mower species brought back from the dead, but unfortunately there are complications and ethical issues faced by those willing to revive the species. Still, imagine a world where the mowers, even a smaller species, were still roaming the dense forests of New Zealand, not bothered by human activity or introduced predators.